can complex PTSD cause anger issues? This was a question that was sent in recently. It was such a good question. I wanted to answer it for you today. Many people that have been through narcissistic abuse or childhood trauma tend to think that the person that is the abuser is the one that has the anger issues, which is true. <laughs> definitely true. They definitely have anger issues and it comes out in, in how they treat their family members. But one of the side effects of complex PTSD can also include the fact that you have this intense anger that is really challenging to let go of. So today I'm, I'm hoping to make sense of that for you so that we can humanize it and realize that it's normal or normalize it, I should say, and find ways to work through it. So with that in mind, I do want to let you know that if you're struggling with anger and you have been for a while and you're trying to let go of it and, and it just seems too overwhelming, make sure you check out my uh, workshop that's in two weeks. It's an interactive workshop, right? We're going to meet live and talk about tips and tools on how to work through anger from the past so that it's not like an anchor around your ankles that keeps you from moving forward. Okay, so make sure you check out that workshop if the videos aren't enough for you. And the first thing I wanna say, if you are feeling anger is congratulations, <laughs> which may sound strange, but the reality is, is that if you don't feel that anger, if you don't reach that step, because that's what it is, it's a step, it's not a destination, and we don't wanna make it a destination, but it is a step on the healing journey. And until you reach that step, you can be stuck in emotions that keep you from moving forward, like shame, unworthiness, helplessness. So anger actually pulls you out of those lower vibrational states. The thing is, is that once we're out of those lower vibrational states and we hit that anger step, we want to keep moving forward. We don't want to get stuck in it. But just to normalize it, just to help you to understand why it's a process and why anger is a normal step on your healing journey is if you think about it, when you are angry, right? It's a, it's a survival instinct. Your survival instinct has kicked on, which means your mind starts to focus on action, on what you need to do in order to survive. And for many, that might mean analyzing people that are toxic in their life, people that are causing so much pain, and it might mean taking action as far as removing certain people from your life, or the action might be if you can't remove certain people from your life, or if that's not in harmony with your values for whatever reason, if it's your family members, then the action you might need to take is boundaries. Maybe prior to feeling anger, you put up with things that you may have thought were normal. But once it's done and you reach that anger phase, you start realizing, I need to do something. And that might be learning how to put down and enforce boundaries. So the anger really is trying to get your attention so that you see and look at what you need to do to protect yourself. Another reason why anger is, is common if you've been through psychological abuse is the fact that if you have been mistreated, if you are being mistreated, especially by people that you would expect to love you, Okay, so it's one thing to be insulted by a stranger who doesn't know you, but it's a whole nother emotional pain to be insulted by somebody that is either your significant other or a family member or a parent. So anger, anger is a secondary emotion that is an emotion of an emotion. And one of the emotions that it stems from is pain. Pain hurts and your brain is designed to keep you safe and it's designed to pull you away from pain and push you towards pleasure. So if it sees that the pain hurts, it's going to make you feel angry because at least when you're angry, you don't feel vulnerable. You feel strong and you feel a little bit more power. Another reason for anger issues is the fact that you might be stuck in the fight response. So there are four trauma responses, right? There's fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. And a lot of people, if they were in long-term relationships with chronically emotionally and psychologically abusive people, they may have been stuck in the fawn or freeze position, which means as a result of all the abuse, they shut down. 
or they were frozen, like a deer in headlights, right? You think of a deer in headlights, it sees the car, but it just can't move because it's frozen, because of fear. Well, if you've been raised in an environment where any move you make, any breath you take, any small little thing you do can result in emotional warfare, you're walking through life as if you're walking through a minefield and you're so scared of, of doing anything. It's common that a lot of people that were in those dynamics, they're afraid of being real. They're afraid of, of authenticity. They're afraid of sharing their thoughts. They're afraid of saying the wrong thing because anything and everything can set off a bomb. Well, when they reach that anger phase, right, where they realize that this treatment is going on, that they don't deserve it, that it's wrong, and their survival brain kicks on, and it starts putting them in that anger phase, they can often swing to the other side of the spectrum when it comes to trauma responses, and they go from fawning to fight because they don't want to be hurt anymore. And it's not that they are now the narcissist, it's not that they are the abuser, but their brain is trying to keep them safe and it's trying to take action. I remember somebody telling me, a story about like this really um, loving cat, this really loving sweet cat that wound up getting in a fight or, or hit by a car. I can't remember the details, but it was wounded and it was hurt. And when he went to pet this loving sweet cat, did it purr? No, it attacked and struck out with its claw and was in that fight mode because it was mean, because it was a bad cat. No, it was because it was hurt and the people, the person that was going to touch it was touching that wound. Well, people that have unhealed CPTSD, they have wounds and sometimes they're, who, who is around them, which it might be their kids, it might be friends, it might be people at work, they may unintentionally touch on those wounds and when that happens, you might find yourself acting from a fight response. Usually when that happens, after it's over, you'll look back and be like, what did I do? Like, what happened to me? Why did I act like that? And it's because that fight response kicked on. And unhealed CPTSD, if you don't work through it, you can stay stuck in that fight response. In fact, in fact, narcissists try to condition you to be in that fight response, right? They do that by poking and poking at your wounds until you explode and then they relieve your, you from the abuse by just being calm and being like, what, what's wrong? You know, why are you like this? They're actually conditioning you to feel provoked faster and faster, to be in your anger response. So it's another reason why people with complex PTSD might struggle with that because they've been conditioned to. And even if the person is out of your life, doesn't mean that you just go back to who you were before. Just like the wounded cat needs medical attention and needs to heal, it's the same thing with CPTSD. You have to get some attention, you have to work through the wounds so that people around you don't trigger you anymore. I think sometimes people think I'm gonna make sure everyone is removed from my life so I'm not, I'm not triggered, but that's not really working through the wound. And the last reason I'm gonna mention as to why you may be struggling with uh, anger issues if you're working through complex PTSD is the fact that because you've been through chronic, long-term emotional abuse, stress, drama, psychological abuse, emotional warfare, your brain, parts of your brain have been activated for a very long time. Your limbic network or your uh, the alarm system in your brain has been going off all the time to the point that it's now a faulty alarm system. And it's in such hyper arousal that it detects danger in areas that don't make sense. So I know that's probably a lot to take in and it's challenging. It, the reality is, is that working through complex PTSD takes time it takes effort, it takes self-compassion, it takes being patient with yourself because your brain has been hardwired into having these reactions. It's been conditioned to feel it certain ways 
And trauma isn't like the common cold. It doesn't just go away with time. Your brain doesn't just go back to how it should be just because you detox emotional abusers from your life. You actually have to take time to do the work to rewire your rewired brain, right? To rewire it again in a more healthy and empowered way so that it gets rid of the coping skills that you adopted as a result of the abuse that are now keeping you from being happy. And if you need help with that, because it's not easy, remember, there's the Thriver School of Transformation where it's a group of international people that are on the same journey. You're not alone and you don't have to feel alone and misunderstood on your healing journey.